Hi, I am Peter Gordon, and this is Saturday Works. This is our weekly reflection on what Sunday's Gospel can teach us about encountering God in serving others. Hi everyone, and welcome to this week's reflection. This Sunday, we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. Jesus' baptism is described in all four Gospels, but Sunday's reading is from the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel of Luke tells us that after Jesus had been baptized and was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. The Pope Benedict XVI, in his book, Jesus of Nazareth, remarks and asks this about the baptism of Jesus. Baptism itself was a confession of sins and an attempt to put off an old fail life and to receive a new one. Is that something Jesus could do? How could he confess sins? And how could he separate himself from his previous life in order to start a new one? Now, of course, the answer to these questions posed by Pope Benedict is no. Jesus didn't have any sins to confess. And no, Jesus didn't have an old failed life he needed to put off to receive a new one. So why did Jesus ask to be baptized? Well, according to Pope Benedict, in the act of baptism, Jesus loaded the burden of all mankind's guilt upon his shoulders. He bore it down into the depths of the Jordan. And Pope Benedict went on to say that when we accept the invitation to be baptized, it means that we go to the place of Jesus' baptism. It is to go where he identifies himself with us and to receive there our identification with him. So how can we understand the relationship of Jesus' baptism to encountering God in the service of others? Well, I think that when we receive our identification with Jesus through our baptism, we can enter into another suffering like Jesus entered the depths of the Jordan. So what's the significance of that image of entering into the Jordan? Well, when we serve others, it's one thing to do good for them. It's an entirely another thing to be merciful. So let me turn to St. Faustina to explain. Now, St. Faustina wrote this prayer in section 163 of her diary. It starts, I want to be completely transformed into your mercy and to be your living reflection, O Lord. May the greatest of all divine attributes, that of your unfathomable mercy, pass through my heart and soul to my neighbor. Her prayer goes on to ask that her eyes, her ears, her tongue, hands, and feet be merciful. And then she says, Help me, O Lord, that my heart may be merciful, that I myself may feel all the sufferings of my neighbor. Now, consider St. Faustina's words in light of what the prophet Isaiah said about the suffering servant, who we understand to be Jesus. It was our pain that he bore, our sufferings that he endured. Now, Jesus did not simply ignore or forget our sins. He bore our suffering. And when we enter into someone else's suffering, like Jesus entered the Jordan, he is already there waiting for us. He meets us there. And when we join him there, we receive our identification with him we are transformed into his mercy. We can become the instrument of his mercy for someone else and may be given the grace to actually bear the sufferings of others through this transformation. It's not possible for us to become mercy on our own. Only Jesus can transform us. Perhaps all we have to do is ask, like St. Faustina does. So I offer this thought and prayer for the week. Heavenly Father, when I see another suffering, give me the grace to enter into that suffering for them, 
just like Jesus entered into the Jordan River for me. Let the descent of the Holy Spirit at my baptism transform me into an instrument of your mercy. Meet me in their suffering and transform me into your mercy. Let me bear that suffering like my brother Jesus bore mine so that I can share in the blessed life that is your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you and see you next week.